Let's move away from lies and fears. Perhaps it's time to leave. And welcome to this week's episode of Shattercast Ooh. with my friends Derek and Joe. Joe, Joe. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> There's an echo in here. Sorry about that. Yes, there is, there is, there is, there is. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about, <laughs> uh, we've already lost one of our guys. Um, <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about Disney. Okay. And then after that, we're going to talk um, about Disney. Okay. And then near the end, we're going to bring it back around. Uh, and talk about Disney. What about, what about um, and Fox? What about, what, is Fox uh, in there somewhere? Well, Fox is, is kind of in there, but really Fox is just Disney at this point. Oh, my um, goodness. Which is... It's bad, bad news. Bad news. But we, we will discuss that in a moment. A segue into... <laughs> uh, <laughs> never thought I would need to segue from an intro into the first topic, because that's like the whole point of the intro. But I digress. Our first topic, Disney and Fox merging together. How do we feel about that? Um, are we concerned? Are we not concerned? Excited? Not excited? Uh, Joel, I know you have some... Some opinions. It, it kind of rings of uh, kind of monopolizing yes. on the market. I and believe there's some, the there some mustache twirling that Disney's doing, and it's not the good kind. If there is a good kind. Is uh, there a good kind? <laughs> which, continue. No, because the point is, it's like, man, like, when, 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 like, Disney owns everything that we watch, whether or not mm -hmm. they have a direct hand in it or they yeah. just merge with it, it means that we're only seeing one side. Mm -hmm. of the story every time so whatever disney wants to feed into our brains that's what we're getting and uh i'm just not a big fan of that honestly and i think that even though fox has not done the best job with their x-men movies like that of late they've not named three good x-men movies one and two first class <laughs> I think that's first like I, class was pretty two good. Two is pushing it, but I'll give first, it to you. First like class was pretty favorite. good. Really, too, really. Yeah. Okay. I, I think that first like class was yeah. was definitely my favorite one. Yeah, favorite one. I mean, first class definitely yeah. belongs in the list. And then and you would, have yeah. like the Dark Phoenix, which looks kind of. Eh. We'll, what? We'll, we'll discuss that. I Everything went downhill with X Men Three, and I love but, how Days of Future Past just fixed X Men Three. It was like that one didn't happen. Yeah, we're gonna pretend. That I think that like the point is is like. <laughs> Even just ha having Fox not not like a not like be a part of Disney means that they would want to try their best to make good films because they mm. have to come like Pete against Disney, which is this giant, this wor worldwide giant that's t taken over so much. Yeah. And now that they don't have that anymore, then even though we may not see it right away, then they can maybe slack off because they know they're gonna make the big money. Mm. Obviously, D D Disney now has like an unlimited un amount. Of, res of like resources that they can pump into these movies to make them great. But as us, as viewers, though, that may actually hurt us in the long run. So that's my opinion. Yeah. Well, and, and I think earlier when we were talking um, sort of our, our pre-shoot meeting, mm -hmm. um, you, you mentioned that um, uh, people will come back to Disney if it's the only place that they can get X-Men stories anymore, if it's the only yeah. place they can get Marvel stories, regardless of the quality, if it's the only place we can get it, then we're, we're going to be starved for it otherwise. And I think that you, you see that in video games too, like uh, Call of Duty, you know, they're on like iteration 73 of the Call of Duty video games. And like the most recent one doesn't even have a story. Like there's no campaign, there's no solo mode anymore. Blast um, them. And, and, but there's... <laughs> There's only one producer of Call of Duty. You know, you have to go there to get that game. And uh, Battlefield has actually, they went, they kind of did this mm -hmm. in that they, they were good and they all kind of went downhill really fast, but then they're kind of getting good again with the World War I, World War II games. Um, so I think you make a good point when there is like one studio that we can count on for this brand of stories that we love, then they can, they could slack off. Now, yeah. Hopefully, they'll do what they've done with Marvel, which is, in my opinion, they've like gotten up to here, and then they've just coasted up there. Oh yeah, I mean, but, I mean, eventually, eventually, Marvel is going to have a crappy movie, and it's going to break my heart. But as of yet, they're doing well. Mm. Press F for Thor two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to chime in. That was good. That was good. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I have some concerns as well. Uh, it's cool that Disney Disney owns Marvel. Marvel's been doing a great job with the movies and stuff. A great job, but um, 
Thank you. Fox, them. which owns X Men and Fantastic Four, I believe, they're now going to be able to incorporate all these things. Yeah. I think we forget one of the reasons Marvel's movies were so good is that they do a great job by understanding their characters mm -hmm. and making great stories. Yeah. They also weren't afraid to dip into some of their BC list characters at the time and really highlight them. That's why we got Iron Man, you know, that's why Guardians of the Galaxy. I think some of these Ant Man, some of these movies would not have been made if they had all of their heavy hitters at the time. We forget that. And so with them getting back uh, properties like the X-Men and Fantastic Four, I, part of me is excited. I love X-Men. I want to see what Marvel's take would be on doing the X-Men again. The other part of me feels like, hey, some of these other characters that Marvel has may not get the time to shine if they're all under one studio. So hopefully it goes well. Um, but again, there's a the concern as well with them owning everything now. Uh, is that going to be good or bad? And the other concern is all these streaming services are now popping up. We know that Disney is now going to launch their own streaming service, and some uh, things for Marvel has already been announced, like there's going to be a Loki series and a Vision mm -hmm. and Scarlet Witch series. So that's going to be interesting. That's going to be on the Disney streaming service, I believe. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody in the comments. Um, Mar uh, Disney also owns now, I think, like 60% of Hulu. So some mm -hmm. Marvel properties are going to stay on Hulu. Um, so it's all this streaming stuff is going on. Um, so it's kind of concerning that there's so many different things that they're planning. Are they going to be able to juggle everything well? Um, we saw with the Star Wars property that a lot of people have been too thrilled with where mm -hmm. Disney's taking it. Um, so, again, I'm just a little concerned with them getting all these properties. Are yeah. they going to do well? And without the competition <laughs> factor, um, you know, what is it going to look like? Well, and I think I think that what we're, we're finally seeing... Um, the the how do i say this this all started like 10 15 years ago when netflix uh you could you know you could have dvds mailed to your door and eventually yep. they came out with a streaming service and they were like they offered over to blockbuster hey buy netflix from us they offered it to blockbuster and blockbuster was like no that's not going to work and now there's one blockbuster left in the entire world and i believe it's in washington state Um, and that's it. There's one, they have a Twitter channel that's hilarious, but Good job. Uh, so, so, you know, when that started, it started really the true downfall of cable television. I haven't had cable in five years. I, yeah. I have Hulu, I have Netflix and because of my internet service provider, I have uh, NBC. Okay. Those three things together are still less than half of what it would cost to have cable. And I can see literally every show that I care about on mm -hmm. those on those three streaming services. But as cable gets more and more sort of distant from, from people, and especially in our generation and, and younger, um, aren't investing in cable, aren't getting cable, uh, I think we're gonna see more streaming services pop up because no one wants to just give their stuff over to Netflix and, and get royalties for it. They were like, no, we wanna have our own streaming service. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so streaming services are gonna be the cable of the 21st century. Yeah, pretty um, much so. But I, I, I just, I like having like Netflix and Hulu. Like if I could just keep those two, and not have to worry about, man, now I got to get the Disney one. Ah, oh, now I got to get the We'll DC see what's going to happen. Yeah. As you said, I feel like the people who are in the TV world, and I could be wrong, I, 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 I'll have to read more about it. I'm pretty sure that those like people who are beginning to lose a bunch of money on just normal TV are probably moving into this deal. Because what they're doing is they're just reinventing TV yeah. on the internet. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there'll be a time when it'll come out where you can subscribe to this mega package that has Hulu and also Netflix in it and Ooh. also does this for one. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you're just paying for TV. Just well, with, with, on your well and, and, and it's so. interesting to see some of those partnerships already happening. Like T-Mobile has uh, this level of account where you get Netflix for free or is it Hulu? One of the two you get for Probably, free with, yeah. your, with your monthly subscription. Um, but but that there's an, another oh, thing. Prime. Yeah, yeah, Amazon Prime. It's Amazon it. Prime. Um, and that's the other, that's another one I have. Uh, which because it's it's so much more than just the video. Like I use it for their service, and then also I get to watch their library of stuff for free. Um, but that's an, another thing. Another impact of all these streaming services is the advertising industry. Like Hulu, you can pay to not have ads. Netflix, you don't have ads. Um, Amazon Prime, no ads. Like. Like, and you have to pay extra to not have ads on these services, but we're talking like on Hulu, it's like 
a dollar or two dollars a month. So twelve dollars for the entire year, and there's no ads. YouTube hmm. Premium is ten dollars a month, and you don't have ads. It's like we're we're basically giving these these companies money so they don't show us advertisements. They end up making more than the view per impression thing that they would get for selling advertiser space. So how are advertisers going to push their stuff on us in the future if we're not watching TV? If we all use ad block and if we're all paying on all of our streaming services to not see ads, Is that what we do. What's <laughs> I think no. it's like sixty percent of internet users in America have ad block on their computer. Like I never do that. Every time I go to every time I go to like the Weather Channel, like the 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 Weather uh, dot com, there's a little thing that pops up saying we see you're using ad blocker. We need to be able to put food on our tables, and I'm like. I'm sorry. And then I'll whitelist the Weather Channel. It's like, I'll see your ads. I'm sorry. I Good feel job, like Weather Channel. I see what Weather you Channel. Really we you with support that. the Weather Channel. <laughs> but anyway, so I think there's there's a lot of implications that we're only seeing the start of with all these streaming services um, that are that are interesting. It, it seems more and more like the only thing people are turning to cable for these days are like sporting events. Yep. Yeah. Like the Super Bowl and stuff. Yeah. To bring wow. it full circle back to Disney again, we were also talking before, like, why is Disney buying all these properties? Why are they launching their streaming service? And, and own Disney, the world. Is, uh, <laughs> Disney is a beloved company, yeah. and a lot of people love their properties and stories and stuff like that. Um, but they're a for profit company. You know, they're yeah. doing this for profit. And we had a, a good discussion is seeking profit bad? Mm. Um, you know, companies do need to make money to pay their shareholders or to pay their employees and stuff like that. So we don't think profit in and of itself is bad. It's just when profit becomes the only priority, then mm -hmm. a lot of stuff starts to take a hit, yeah. you know, where it's storytelling or where it's, um, you might have to compromise your artistry or your creativity mm -hmm. just because you're trying to seek after what makes the most money. Yeah. And well, yeah. The, the people, people say like the phrase money grab, like, Oh, that movie is just a money grab, you know, like, Oh, the, the, the third installment of uh, Spider-Man back in the early 2000s was just a money grab, right? Um, and and so there's, uh, it wasn't a very good one. It uh, wasn't a very good attempt at getting money. Um, so says you. <laughs> I'm just I'm just throwing I'm just throwing a lot of shots today. I'm sorry, um, but but it it begs the question, right? If if you're a for profit business like Disney is, like Marvel is, then everything you put out technically is a money grab because if it's not, you're going to go out of business and you're not going to make anything. But to your point, when that's the only thing you're concerned about and the quality of product falls off, but if people still pay for it then we're enabling, you know, bad behavior and, and things that, that aren't quality products. Um, however, uh, I think it's, it's important to, to realize, like, you know, you look at um, uh, Infinity War, right? Made like billion dollars or whatever. But if you, if you watch the credits, which no one ever watches, right? And, uh, well, except for Marvel movies. Now we're forced to sit there and watch the credits. Look at that in credit scene. Brilliant, Marvel. Marvel. See what um, you did there. You realize how long you have to wait to get to the end credit scene? It's because of all of the hands that touch that movie. You're talking about hundreds and hundreds of people who made that movie work. So it needs to make a billion dollars, right? If you're talking about a thousand people's salary, it took them nine months to make a movie. Like, think about just how much you're paying in people's salary to make that movie possible. It has to make millions and millions of dollars just to break even, not not counting all the cost of marketing and everything else. So, so movies have to make a lot of money. But when you're Marvel and you're telling a fantastic story, it works out really well. When you take The Hobbit and turn it into three movies that have to make a Shots billion. Fired. No, well, this is accurate, though. It, it, it well deserved. The Hobbit was, was supposed to be one movie. Mm -hmm. And they went to Peter Jackson and they said, in order to, to not go bankrupt, we need to make three movies. And this is how much money each of them need to make in the box office. Yeah. It was like, we're overextending on this and we need to make... We need to spread this story out into several movies, and they all need to gross at least this much in the box office. And so I think they all, did pretty well yeah, overall sales-wise. Yeah, it you know. did sales-wise, yeah, but everyone mocked The Hobbit. It was the smallest of the four books, and it got three movies <laughs> instead of instead of the large books, each getting one movie each. Um, so I mocked it. Yeah, so you see how uh, when when the money is the main priority, uh, you can make creative decisions that don't make sense to the general public. A lot of people felt like The Hobbit was stretched a little too thinly. Um, but it was because if they didn't do that, they were going to go bankrupt. And so 
we we want the focus right to be story and quality first and if it's there we're going to pay money for it awesome and i think that brings us to our faith point we we're talking about is just in our personal lives is seeking money bad yeah. um and we all need money we need resources to live to put food on the table to provide for families you know to pay for school uh to drive a car get gas all that stuff so i think seeking money itself doesn't have to be bad it's when seeking money becomes our highest priority and when it causes us to compromise our principles our faith our creativity that's when things start getting bad uh, there's a great quote a lot of people misquote it um, but it's from first Timothy 6 and it says the love of money is the root of all in i was going to say that if you didn't get to that yeah. there you yeah. go so it's not money itself money i think from god's point of view it's just a resource you know it's and we're called as christians to be good steward of all the resources God has given us. That's our time, that's our talent, that's our money, our treasure, as some people say. Um, and so, again, you can use money to bless people. You can give to your church, you can give to good causes, you know, um, you can give to help those who are in need. Uh, so money itself doesn't have to be bad. It's just what priority does money take in your life? If seeking money is your highest priority, then yes, it is bad. If you're only taking a job just for the money, if you're um, treating people badly um, because they have less money than you do, you know, anything like that, that then can become negative. Again, if money's in the right place, if you're using your money um, to take care of your responsibilities and to help provide for other people and to bless other people, then money becomes in its proper place. God has always have to be at the uh, top of those things. Um, if you put money first in any form or getting wealth in any form, again, your priorities become shifted and it's usually not a good mix. What do you guys think about that? Well, I think it's like what Jesus said about the rich man. It's like the rich like man came like to Jesus, like, how can I get what you got? Like, how can I live forever? How can I get this eternal life? And Jesus is like, you got to give it all to come after me. And then he's, and then he went away sad. And then the 12, the select pools were like, Jesus, they like were shocked because they're like, how can if like a rich man cannot make it then how can we ever make it because back like then their view like point was like the more wealth you had like the more god cared about you mm. <laughs> but, Je but jesus said that it's impossible you know for a man you know it's like this rich guy in heaven but with all like things all things are possible and i think what you said it comes down to our heart posture if we're solely seeking ourselves and we're solely seeking our own wealth then we can start to fall down this slippery slope. We're willing to push other people down to make money. We're willing to hold things back to hoard things up. And the Lord is pretty straight out. Jesus is pretty straight out that do not hoard up the treasures of this life, you know, go for like the higher treasures, the heavenly treasures, you know, and it talks about like what those are is like, that's like the fruits and the gifts of the spirit. That's like pursuing love that's pursuing God. That's, that's giving your time and giving your patience. Cause at least how I like view the word is like man like kind was never meant to live for itself. We were always supposed to live with like God and for God. And this whole self-seeking mentality is the cause of, if you look at it, pretty much every war, every dispute, because someone gets mad because a way that they did not want things to go <laughs> did not turn out or whatever what I'm saying. He's like, you know, you have this land and I like want this land. I'm going to kill like you for it. You said this like to me and that made me feel bad because I don't have a strong sense of self. I'm going to make you pay for it. Everything comes to me, 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 me. You hurt me, you hurt me, you hurt me. And Jesus tells us that when you became a Christian, you died yourself and you rose again in Christ Jesus. So that whole seeking yourself mentality was lost. But when it comes to money, when it comes to profit, at least how, how like I view it is, as Derek said, these are tools that can be used for good or bad. And the truth of the matter is that in this world, until Jesus comes again, whatever it is, then there is an economy and there's Caesar that owes his due for taxes and whatnot. These are realities that God says, do not skip on these, but do not make them your main focus of life. And what it does become your main focus of life, um, at least what I've found is when I started to chase my like, rear goals super heavily, I'd meet a goal and then my mind would go to like the next goal and I could never actually enjoy the moment. And it was not until like, the Lord really broke that on me that says that my self-worth is not found on how much I make or how much I like, so, like, like, so, like, succeed, but who he says I am, which is someone that's worth his death. Um, 
that changed my perspective and allowed me to say money. I still want to save money. I still want to make money, but not for the sake of just lording it over somebody to have these resources that when I do get married, when I do have a kids, it's like that, then I can actually help raise them without giving them scraps, you know? Yeah. So no, that's really good. Both of you. I, I appreciate uh, <clears throat> what you both had to say. And um, I think it's, it's easy to, to understand the concept of the love of money being the root of all evil when um, when we just think of it in a different word, you know, in modern time, we would just call the love of money greed. That greediness is the root of, of evil. Money itself isn't. Just like, you know, there's, there's uh, what is it, um, uh, a sword, right? Let's, let's keep it in like biblical times. Like a sword is neither good or evil. It, it is only that which its wielder uses it for that gives it a purpose. A sword can be used to defend um, a family, you know, if, if, you're, if you're riding your caravan into town and, and some, some people come in and try and rob your caravan, you can defend your loved ones and that sword be used for, for a, a just purpose. Or on the flip side, you can be one of the people going to rob that caravan and using a sword to try and kill them. And in, the, in that case, sword is being used for an evil purpose. Don't be that person. Don't be the mugger. <laughs> Don't be um, the mugger. <laughs> do, 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 full do, do, do. stop. Um, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Great podcast, guys. Um, uh, money, very much the same, can be used for very evil things, and it can be used for very awesome things. You know, that's why um, tithing is so important in church, right? Because it, we we have faith that um, they are going to use it wisely, that they are going to use it in such a way that glorifies God. Um, some churches uh aren't as transparent about that, and it, and it, it puts a bad light um, on, on uh, churches in America sometimes when we see churches mishandle money. Um, but uh, far and away, you know, we, should, we should be aware of the organization we're giving our money to and how they're going to spend it so that we can give in a way that is going to honor and glorify God because um, we recognize that like a sword, money is a tool. It, it is a currency that can be used to uh, advance a purpose, right? I want a car, that's my purpose. So I'm gonna save up money and then buy a car. That, that money was a tool to advance buying a car, right? But we can, we can do a bunch of different things with money. And so money itself is not evil, it's, it's neutral. It's, but the purposes it can be used for can make it good or evil. And so when when we're when we're having this conversation when we're trying to talk about how we as christians uh, should should operate with and around money uh, it should never be our our focus should never be to attain wealth or attain riches um but at the same time if we come into money in whatever different ways that can that can be we have a responsibility in how we handle that money and how we steward that money you know you have the the three people that were given talents and they were told to, you know, steward it. And the, the first one had five, came back with 10. The next one had four, came back with eight. And the other guy he had, what, one talent or two talents and he, he buried it in the ground. And it was like, well, I didn't get you any extra, but I didn't want to lose it, you know? So you have what you gave me. Here, you can have it back. And that was the one who messed up. Yeah. You know, because they were so afraid of, of losing the money that they didn't multiply it. They didn't do something to, to honor God with it. And, and so, you know, it's uh, money itself is neutral. It's how we use it. And so should we, we use it to, to buy a bunch of frivolous things and make ourselves happy? No, you, you, know, you know there's only one thing that you can take to heaven, and that's other people. You can't take stuff. And so money should not be used to just amass all these things on earth that make us feel good for six months or or buy a bunch of, of extravagant things that, that really don't bring us a lot of joy because we can't take them to heaven, but we can take people to heaven. And that should be our focus, souls, not, not stuff. And so you know, it's, 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 it's sad for me that we have to have this conversation in the 21st century. I feel like this is something that Christians, we should already get. You know, we should, already, we should be past this, right? It's, it, <laughs> money isn't evil. Right, it can be good, it can be bad, whatever. But it, it's not, it's not what matters. You know, the, the thesis statement of the Bible. You know, you read a read a research paper. At the end of the first paragraph, hopefully, if they did it well, you have a thesis statement, and that is basically here is the reason for this paper existing, 
here's the things I'm going to propose, and we're going to find out if that's accurate by the end of the paper. The thesis statement of the Bible I hold fast is Christ. He is the whole point. Everything in the Old Testament is pointing ahead to Christ. And then you have the four Gospels and everything starting with Acts up to Revelation looking back at the life of Christ. So the, the, the first section, the Old Testament, is saying he, the Savior, the Messiah, is coming. And the New Testament is saying he already came. How then should we live? And so the, the focus of our lives has to be on Christ. He is the most important thing. He is the focal point of everything in our life. So if we replace that with anything else, our life is going to be out of order. And we were talking for the last 10, 15 minutes about if we replace that with money. But you can easily replace it with a lot of other things. You can replace it with relationships. You can replace it with fame, with uh, athletic prowess. You know, anytime something else goes into the focal point of our life, aside from Christ, we screwed up and, and we got to fix it yeah. and we got to do it better. And I am a pastor and occasionally I preach. I apologize. I will stop there. <laughs> it was, it was good. <laughs> good job. That's a good word. So, uh, in your life again, uh, you know, just be careful of your motives. Uh, if you're trying to get money, just make sure it's for the right reasons and make sure you spend it to help others, uh, to pr take care of responsibilities and to honor God. Uh, and coming full circle back to our topic, Disney, Fox merging, hey, they're allowed to do that. Um, they, it could be good, it could be bad. Uh, just, you know, and they're a company, they're allowed to make money. Uh, just hopefully this merger won't cause a dip in any creativity or stories and things like that. Um, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. We shall see. <laughs> and I think that is the most important takeaway. We shall see. Because uh -huh. I think in today's society, it is so easy to prejudge something and never give it a chance. I, whether it succeeds or not, I don't know. But I want it to. I want it to be awesome. So I'm going to wait and see if it is. So with that being said, love God, love people, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs> You want to hurt stuff?